Hi. So I would like to say a warm and hearty welcome to all the participants. It is uh, Eden European Distance Learning Week, which we organize for the third time. Uh, this uh, webinar is recorded, so you will get the link afterwards, and it will also later be published at our, our information channels. We are this year, uh, from Eden, uh, proudly hosting the third year of the European Distance Learning Week, EDL Week, uh, week in cooperation with the United States uh, Distance Learning Association, USDLA, uh, who also have their uh, National Distance Learning Week this week. So it is in uh, collaboration with them. And there are also some parallel Eden events. Uh, we have already uh, have web webinars since Monday. And maybe some of you attended those as well. And you will have access to all the webinars uh, afterwards, uh, after this week. Uh, we have had uh, very interesting presentations for the whole week, which really are in the cutting edge uh, of our field in open and online topics for innovation, from innovations in design to open education research, and as for today, as about quality. My name is Eva Ossian Nelson, and I am uh, your moderator for today. I am in, also in the Eden EP, Eden Executive Committee. I'm also in the Eden Fellow Council, and I'm Eden Fellow myself. I'm also chair of the Eden Special Interest Group on the Quality Enhancement and Enable Learning, which also is one of the topics for today. So we have today two presentations, and I will come back to that. First, some practical. Uh, things. Uh, if you don't already have done it, uh, please mark on the map where you are from and please introduce yourself in the chat. Uh, during the, the webinar, we have some polls for you because we are interested to collaborate with you and to hear your opinions about what we are talking about today. And those of you who have registered will also uh, receive a badge that you have um, taken part in this webinar. And the webinars are recorded. Wait uh, for some minutes uh, while you um, place your yourself on the map. Uh, the description of this uh, webinar is about that um, the learning landscape looks so completely different from today than it just did five years ago. And the way that learners are learning is changing dramatically. Today, learning is avail available from anywhere, everywhere, and to any kind of device. And formal and informal learning are more and more merged. And in the context of globalization and knowledge economy, the quality of higher education is increasingly regarded as strategically important for national economic development and competi competitiveness. That's why high quality and relevant higher education equips students with the knowledge, skills, and core transferable com competences they need to succeed after the graduation <laughs> within a, a high quality learning environment which recognizes and supports good learning and teaching. That is uh, the background where we host this webinar for today. Uh, because uh, recently, uh, very, very new, uh, ANCA has uh, published their considerations for quality assurance of e-learning provision. So that is our one of our main topics, or maybe the, or should it the main topic for today's webinar and how it is applicable for all forms of e-learning and how learning uh, with, with um, ICT, uh, digital, uh, digital devices, digital uh, components, digital digitization as such can be used uh, for better learning possibilities. Uh, it 
will also be presented how it can be applicable into higher education uh, quality assurance uh, provision and their systems. Uh, beside that concept, also the Tesla project will be discussed. The Tesla is a project funded by the European Commission. And it is about standards for integration into different learning environment, uh, which would be developed to reduce the current restriction of time and physical spaces in teaching and learning, uh, which open up uh, uh, opportunities for learners with physical or mental disabilities, uh, as well as respecting social and cultural differences. And thirdly, uh, the EDA Special Interest Group on uh, Technology Enabled Learning and Quality Enhancement will be presented, and that special interest group aim to advocate and work for a new inequality agenda in education. So this topic very much um, problematize and uh, enhance about uh, that we need to have a new quality agenda in education. So, um, so thanks for being here. You will all have possibilities to, um, first of all, um, answer our uh, polls. I see that uh, that is ongoing. Of course, we are interested what you, uh, where you are and what you know about uh, this kind of uh, issues, which will be discussed today. And you have also, of course, possibilities to ask questions. Uh, the questions will be addressed uh, in the end of uh, each presentation. Uh, and I will keep an eye on it on the chat. So please just write your questions in the chat. And the, the issues will be discussed. So again, uh, a warm welcome to everyone, and we get started. <laughs> the topic is about considerations for quality assurance of e-learning provision. And the presenters are uh, Dr. Stel Hutegas Hitaku from uh, HU in Catalonia, in Spain. And besides, um, uh, Esther was also the coordinator for the ENCA work on uh, the considerations for quality assurance of e-learning provision. And that's why we are so happy to have Esther here together with us today. I know she was uh, just recently, I think it was last week in Kazakhstan, discussing about the same topic. And she is uh, almost all over the places at conferences. I met her last uh, some weeks ago in Denmark. And um, it is really a topic which is very, very high on the agenda today. And then myself, uh, I'm from Eden, as I told you. But I'm also from um, uh, the Swedish Association for Distance Education where I'm the Vice President, and I also do a lot of work for ICD. On ICD is the International Council for Open and Distance Learning, and I do a lot of work on OER and on quality for them. I will also be your moderator for today, besides presenting the SIG tell on quality enhancements. So um, Esther will talk to you about the consideration and this uh, for quality assurance of e-learning from ANCA, and that is just published and it is available on the net. And I'm sure uh, here on this slide I have put the links uh, on the image as such. And uh, uh, Esther will also talk to you about the Tesla project. And I myself uh, will talk about the Eden and Sig on talent quality enhancement. And here's also the link. Have a special web page at the Eden web page uh, for this special interest group. And as you see, those two polls, um, which I have asked you to fill in, we want to know if you know about this uh, special interest group and if you want to learn more about it. And I see that 50% um, of you know about it and 100% uh, would like to know more about it. So hopefully, we like to. Uh, to have some more insights after today, but uh, you're also welcome to, to talk more with us and uh, to um, be involved with the SIG. I will tell you how. Uh, so first of all, I just put this um, uh, definition from Commonwealth of Learning, so we are on the same kind of page. What to tell is about. It is about uh, aiming 
It's, it aims to focus on increasing access to quality teaching and learning by supporting policy formulations and innovation in the application of ICT in education and the development of ICT skills. And I think it is a very wide concept. And as um, was said uh, earlier, uh, the, the educational landscape is totally changing nowadays with, uh, due to the increased digitization. So that's the reason why this topic is of uh, high priority. And also this is the daily use, I mean using digital devices, using, using internet, using um, audio, video, radio, TV uh, on, um, from internet uh, is daily, on daily basis for everyone today. And how can that be integrated into education? Uh, so why does it matter? Uh, because uh, the use of TEL can facilitate and promote educational access, equity, quality around the world, which also are the, are the main uh, SDG goals from the United Nations and UNESCO, to be implemented in 2030. And that is not many years until then. So it has very much to do with the SDG goals, education for all. Uh, there are some challenges as the education landscape is changing. There are global demands, there are changing demography, there are society's needs, lifelong learning, lifewide learning, ongoing learning, which is um, maybe more uh, precise concept, it's used more and more. There is a uh, need of upscaling and reskilling because the labor market is changing. And that's also why WebTel can uh, really be used uh, widely. They are changing labor market, uh, increased digitization, as I said, uh, technological development, make that um, like the fourth industrial revolution that we change the way we learn, to change the way we work, it changed the way we connect to people, it changed the way we relate to each other, it changed the way we communicate to each other, so it more or less changed um, every kind of uh, what we're doing in daily life. You can just see from the uh, uh, other uh, sectors like the film and the music uh, uh, and banking and the uh, hotels and not at least the latest uh, taxi movement with Uber. Everything is changing. Uh, there are more learning on demands. Uh, learners, students take control over their own learning and they have other needs that maybe are, um, are among the offers from the higher education institutions or from the educational institutions. There are needs for just for me and just in time learning. So they, that's why uh, <laughs> TEL matters, and that's why quality in e learning and TEL matters. You need to have a, a other kind of quality agenda. Uh, so this SIG is about just to advocate and work for renewing the quality agenda in education. Of course, we don't have all the answers yet because then it could be easy, but there are a lot of challenges and together we can work it out to renew the quality agenda. And that's why we would like to present this uh, SIG here and that we also need uh, your support and your contributions. Of course, it is an open special interest group. <laughs> uh, it started uh, in 2017 and uh, we had, um, uh, during the uh, annual conference in Jönköping, it happened to be in Sweden. Um, and I'm leading this group, and we had uh, each of the days for the conference, we had topics on uh, SIG and on the talent quality enhancement. And you can see the topics here in the bullet points uh, about rationale, about re renewing the quality agenda, about quality on micro, meso, and macro level, about uh, leadership. Because leadership is also an, uh, an issue which uh, really has to be reconsidered. We're working on those. Um, the changing quality agenda. Uh, did the slides uh, become uh, smaller? Smaller now? Yeah, there it is. Thank you. So uh, what we actually have started to do is that we are. Let me see. Did I put, yes, that's right. Um, we are working both for internal uh, Eden community practices, I mean, among our members, for our members, with our mem members, to create a lively and vibrant uh, open platform on, on the issues on quality and tell, to have a meeting place, we have a web page so far, 
and we have also plans to do something more to have blog posts to have uh, announce uh, interesting topics uh, like this webinar for example <laughs> but we also see that we have um, uh, external an external agenda that we can be a, uh, be a place uh, which allows Eden progressively to be be involved and to be in the forefront of changing the quality agenda and that we can be a part, partner for national uh, European and international actors and organizations and networks so um, the issue is very much how can we create opportunities to become visible both internal but also uh, external and how how to make use and of all our members in Eden because uh, everyone more or less are working at their home institutions, home organizations, home countries on this kind of issues and together we can be strong enough to do something very good. Um, so the idea is to be some kind of think tank for quality issues with collaboration, in collaboration with organizations, with professionals uh, to be some kind of um, place where we can raise questions and have a, a community where we can communicate, communicate uh, uh, existing projects, for example, initiatives. Um, I'd like to promote this uh, consideration from uh, quality on, on Anka. It's uh, on the web already. And also to be a network of networks. There are many networks around in Europe and international and also at national level working in those areas. And Eden can also be a hub for that, Eden, especially in Trisku from TAL. But also, as I as said, uh, to be um, policy and advocacy orientated. For example, when the European Union or, or Commission are raising um, uh, calls when they are having white papers or blueprints or whatever, uh, we can react and uh, act on, on those. So far, since 2017, we have started with a smaller uh, core group. From the beginning, it was we from the from the Eden EC, uh, like uh, Sandra Christina Softix, who was also here today, uh, and Maria Nichols from, from Open University in UK, and uh, Arena Bolongavich, from our president, and also uh, Antonella, Antonella Porsche from Eden Na, and the previous uh, president. Um, uh, Antonio Texera for Eden. And um, later we have grown to be some more people who have an interest uh, in this issue. Today, for example, Ulf, uh, Daniel Ehlers is also in the EC. And you can see the members here. And we would like to invite you, if you have an interest in this topic, to just contact us so we can grow, grow to a larger group and we can do more together. So first, what we do mean by quality? Of course, it is both on compliance and consumer protection. It is about enhancement and about process, and it is about reputation. Um, in 2015, I myself, together with some colleagues, we did a quality we did a review on quality models on behalf of ICDE, and we uh, reviewed and uh, researched over 40 plus quality models. We come to up to that, there are some models which are more norm based, like accreditation. And there are some which are more process-based, like self-evaluation uh, and benchmarking, or maybe some somewhere in, in between. So it depends what you mean when you're talking about quality. Is it norm-based, like accreditation? Is it process-based, like self-evaluation? And what do you like to achieve? Most of the quality models, all those 40 plus, uh, they, although they come from different countries all over the world, Although they had different kind of purposes, uh, more or less they and they were also expressed in different kind of um, um, concepts or words. But most of them had those three uh, aspects. It was about management, about strategic planning and development. It was about products, about the course and the curriculum, all this kind of thing. It was about services and staff and student support. And then of course there was the learner and the learner in the middle. And the learners maybe have different kind of quality issues, like transparency, like flexibility, like interactivity, like presence, like trust, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And now that um, Esther will talk very much more about this, because um, 
considerations are very much cover those uh, aspects. Uh, we also came to the conclusion that um, uh, maybe there are no needs to, to uh, develop so many different kind of quality models, but uh, there are some general principles. They should be uh, multifaceted. They should use um, cover large, rather large areas from different kind of angles, so not just to study, for example, the LMS as such or the course for the course as such, but also to study other kind of dimensions which have an impact. They should be dynamic and flexible to also um, integrate new issues like uh, OER MOOCs, although that are not so much new any longer. They should be maybe mainstreamed. Uh, so each uh, individual uh, person who are involved can um, make it to their own. It should be representative, like to take the stakeholders' uh, dimensions uh, into consideration. And of course, they should be multifunctional to, to serve like a roadmap for quality enhancement. So um, this was a very, very brief um, description what we are doing in um, our SIG. And if you have an interest and would like to let you know more, uh, please just be in contact with us. And I see that uh, many of you would like to do so from the poll. So in case you have um, some questions right now, you're welcome to address that uh, now. Otherwise, we take it in the end. Um, for um, Esther's uh, yes, sorry, yes, sorry, <laughs> sorry. We have sorry, sorry, Esther. We have um, we have uh, one poll now in the end. That's right. So I have one question. In your opinion, what will you see that Eden Sigtel will prioritize in the coming years? So if you have some ideas, just uh, please. Uh, write some words or sentences. No, no rush to to write something for the moment. So we maybe can come back to this um, call uh, when we have uh, the others as well. Well, hello to everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. That's fine, Esther. So now I would like to, I think there are some echo. So I would like to introduce uh, and give the floor to Esther Atas Hidalgo from AQR in um, Catalonia, in Spain, and also from the European Association for Quality Assurance in Higher Education, the ENCA. And as I uh, said in the, in the introduction, uh, the topic you will speak about, um, both the first one, but also Tesla, is. Um, very, very uh, high topic on the agenda around the world, I will say. You were just in Kazakhstan, uh, presented it. You were in Denmark for the ADTU conference uh, two weeks ago. And I think you have a rather heavy schedule. And now you're, we are so happy that you're here together with us. So please, uh, if you have some questions that you're in the way for Esther, please write in the chat. And we have, we have some questions to you in the end. OK. Thank you very much. So, uh, Thank you for your there. kind introduction and for the invitation. We are very pleased to present two works here, as you have already said, the result of the working group at ENQUA, 
and also the Tesla project. I hope you you will enjoy. And I also apologize with my camera because I don't know how to fix it <laughs> to have a better quality and not too big head. Okay, so I apologize for this. Okay, anyway, let's go ahead for for the presentation. So how I have organized this presentation, as you can see in the slide, I will begin with a general introduction to the quality assurance and the learning. Afterwards, I will focus on the main findings from the work coming from the working group of ENQUA, that it's focused on quality assurance of e-learning perspective, uh, provision, sorry, from the internal and external perspective. Then I would like to draw your attention to the e-assessment element. And finally, I would like to share with you some main conclu conclusions. Well, so as you know, nowadays we are living in the digital age, and this can be explained through two main reasons, the globalization and the easy access to internet. Those two elements have impacted in the universities themselves, but also in the teaching and learning process. Nowadays, there are some reports that show this uh, scenario shift, as for example, the, the EADGU report, the European Association Distance and Distance Teaching University, which analyzes the change in pedagogical landscape. And this report has been recently published. And other reports, as for example, this one uh, carried out by the European University Association, published in 2015, which shows that the vast majority of higher education institutions are offering or are planning to offer online or blended programs. Nonetheless, there are other reports that, sh that shows that quality assurance of su such provision has been given far less consideration as this one, for example, carried out by EUA in 2014. So, within this framework, ENQUA, the European Network for Quality Assurance Agencies, decided to launch a working group in order to work on a set of considerations for quality assurance of e-learning provision, taking as a reference the European standards and guidelines. This working group was composed by different uh, quality assurance agencies who volunteered to work on this topic, as you can see in this slide. And the working group began to work in November uh, 2016 and has recently published a report in ENQA website, as uh, Eva has already said. But before going into uh, the main elements included in the, in the report from this quality assurance perspective, I would like to share with you some general ideas from the quality assurance and e-learning uh, point of view. As you know, uh, quality assurance is one of the action lines of the Bologna Declaration since the beginning in 1999. And as a consequence of Bologna implementation, the European Standards and Guidelines, the ESG, were defined and adopted by the ministries. I'm not going to go to all the details of the Bologna process, but I would like to highlight some of the relevant elements that I consider that are really important from um, in, in, in this uh, presentation for the e-learning. The first idea is that the standards and guidelines are generic, so they provide a framework and common basis for national and institutional activities. In this sense, they apply to all higher education offer in the European higher education area, regardless of the mode of study or place of delivery. And here we include the e-learning. Thus, all type of e-learning should be considered as well as all phases included in the in a learning process, for example, the e assessment. Okay, sorry. So, the European standards and guidelines were the backbone of this work. Uh, it was agreed that ESG uh, are equally applicable to all modes of teaching and learning, but 
there was a necessity for an appropriate interpretation for using them. So that was the work of, uh, that we carried out at this working group. So we were reinventing the wheel, we were focusing on this appropriate interpretation from the internal and external perspective. In this sense, some recommendations were given to quality assurance agencies in order to improve their review procedures, while higher education institutions should know how to adapt their internal quality assurance system in order to warranty the teaching and learning process. And which are the most challenging the standards? So, if you see the European standards and guidelines from the internal quality assurance point of view, we've got 10 different standards. And I'm going to focus only on a few of them, the most challenging one, and uh, those are the ones marked with an asterisk. So, from the first standard, policy for quality assurance. The policy of an institution uh, should include the e-learning strategy. This should be embedded in the overall strategy of the, of the institution. And the institution should think if the quality assurance strategy should be adapted to, from the e-learning perspective. The policies also should grant access and ensure participation of students with special educational needs. And uh, the institution should be aware of the development of new policies at national and international level. This is the case of the new GDPR uh, directive from the European Commission, which is related to the ethical and legal considerations. A stakeholder's involvement is another important point. As you know, this involvement could be a challenge due to the lack of an on-campus presence. So this means that the institution maybe should have to do uh, or adopt new strategies in order to warranty the participation of all the stakeholders. Student-centered learning, teaching and assessment. This is a really important standard. This standard encourages the use of flexible learning paths, different modes of delivery, a variety of pedagogical methods, and giving a sense of autonomy to each student. So this means that digitizing the content alone doesn't lead to a successful educational setting. So this institution should design an educational model in order to warranty student achievement of learning outcomes. The institution should pay attention to the assessment in order to have measures to warranty the authentication and authorship of the assignments, exams, etc. It, should, it is recommended that the institution organizes online discussion groups in order to guarantee the interaction in between student to student, teaching to students. And also another important element is the learning materials and, the, and obviously they should be appropriated, updated. So let's move to the next standard, and I'm going to focus on the recognition element. The academic recognition should be assured, and there should be the same level of recognition by professional bodies and employers as an on-campus program. And if qualifications are offered, sorry, if qualifications offered by the institution are warranty, the higher education system can help to stop fraud or diploma mills. Teaching the staff is a crucial element. The institution should define the structure, the profile, and the role of teaching the staff, because we have realized and we have seen that uh, there are different uh, teaching the staff profiles participating in e-learning provision. Teachers, teaching staff should be skilled and well supported in relation with the pedagogical and technological requirements. And there could be uh, a bigger complexity uh, when we talk about the coordination of teaching activities, as there are different 
teacher roles involved in doing this role. Okay, so let's move to the next standard, which is uh, learning resources and student support. And I'm going to focus right now in the learning resources and especially, especially in the virtual learning environment, which should be interoperable and robust, and it should ensure accessibility of learning materials and the e-assessment. The library, the e-library is another important element and uh, virtual lab should be uh, well organized if the program includes this type of uh, resources. Student support is one of the core elements of these standards. This is really important. The student support should cover elements as tutoring, pedagogical, technological, administrative related needs. It should be adapted to the e-learning environment and if an institution warranties the student support, the retention rate, the success rate and the satisfaction of students could be improved. Virtual mobility of students and academics is another element that we should take into consideration. And the final standard is information management. This means that there could be data and indicators derived and specific from the e-learning. So let's move to the external quality assurance standards. Here you can see the list included in the European standards and guidelines. And I'm, once again, I'm going to focus only on those standards which are marked with an asterisk. The first one is related to designing methodologies fit for purpose. Obviously, quality assurance agencies should take in consideration the particularities included in part one, included in the internal quality assurance, those elements that we have already commented. The agencies should organize flexible process, processes in order to include new modes of teaching and learning. This means that quality assurance agencies should be flexible but also innovative in their and when designing their review procedures. There could be a specific criteria, indicators, guidelines or frameworks. The next step is implementation process. Here we are going to focus on two main elements, the self-assessment report and the site visit. When talking about the self-assessment report, it is important that this uh, document includes a clear explanation of the pedagog pedagogical model and the virtual learning environment. And it should be recommended to provide access and navigation to the VLE. During the site visit, there will be an intense examination of the technological infrastructure and there will be an interview of all the stakeholders. Uh, in this case, we have to take into account uh, that there could be a wider range of uh, teaching staff roles. This means that the agenda can be longer and this means that we have to pay attention to all the stakeholders participating in the, in the teaching and learning process. The last standard is peer review experts. So agencies need experts with experience in e-learning, blended learning, and they should be trained specifically in this provision. <clears throat> okay, now let's focus on the e-assessment. Why it is important the e-assessment? E-assessment is extremely linked to the academic integrity and trust that's really important for higher education system and nowadays there's a need to resolve the gap in the current online evaluation system because there's no no european framework on e assessment so that's why tesla uh, was um, prepared and it was uh, funded by the european commission in an horizon 2020 call the main aim of this project is to define and develop an e-assessment system which ensures learners' authentication and authorship in online and blended learning environment while avoiding the time and physical space limitation 
imposed by face-to-face -face examination. What is really important from this project is that we have adopted different perspectives. So it covers the teaching and learning processes, the quality assurance aspects, the privacy and the ethical issues, and obviously the technical requirements and the technological development. So this project uh, is composed of 18 partners coming from universities, quality assurance bodies, research centers and enterprises. And what is also really interesting to explain are the development of instruments. In Tesla project, in Tesla um, system, we can distinguish three main groups of, of instruments depending on the functionality and the typology of the instruments. The first group is related to document analysis, related to the analysis of written material. It's linked to the authorship and the instruments are the plagiarism tool which analyzes the written material and detects similarities and also the forensic analysis, the analysis of the written style of the user. The second group is biometrics related to the authentication and ident identifies the user based on the user based on physical characteristics, sorry. And which are the instruments of biometrics? Are facial recognition, web recognition, kid stroke dynamics. And the last group is related to security techniques, related to the confidence. And we are working with timestamp and digital signature. If you want to have more information on how the system is working, I highly recommend you to go to Tesla website and watch some videos that are very uh, specific and explain how the system works. So focusing on the quality assurance elements for e-assessment, the three um, Quality assurance bodies working in, in Tesla, which are uh, Enqua, Ecanie, and Acu Catalunya, we have defined eight standards with indicators and evidences. Nowadays, uh, we have some final results of the pilotings. I haven't gone into details of how the system, how the methodology is being applied in the project. In the project we work with pilots. We have defined three uh, different stages of pilots. Uh, the difference is that develop, the development of technologies were done during the pilots and also the sample of the students were increasing. In this sense, we can say that we began with 600 um, students and we finish with more than 10,000 students in the third pilot. So, um, after we finish the third pilot, we have applied and studied how those standards are complied by the different higher education institutions participating in the pilot. And I would like to share some of these findings. In the first standard, which is related to policies, structures, processes and resources for quality assurance of e-assessment, we have observed some scenarios where e-assessment is permitted and other scenarios where e-assessment is forbidden by law, okay, or by uh, the role of the university. And in overall, all higher education institutions have well-defined policies and processes for quality assurance procedures. Nonetheless, traditional universities who are, which are in the transition from face-to-face uh, -face education to online education should develop a specific policies on e-learning and e-assessment. And when doing this transition, when the development, developing of these quality assurance elements, the quality assurance unit should be involved. From the assessment of learning, 
we have observed a diversity of assessment methods applied in the higher education institutions. This diversity also applied to the um, when assessing, sorry, when assessing the students with a special educational needs. And the chosen assessment methods are aligned with the learning outcomes. In relation with the student support, this is one of the important elements and we have observed good practices and in general all higher education institutions have well established support mechanisms to meet all students' needs. On the other hand, teaching staff should be trained on the innovation of pedagogical practices and should receive technical training. Also, teaching staff should be provided with updated information, guidelines and well-defined procedures to deal with the academic integrity. So this standard is an area for improvement in general for all institutions participating in the project. And finally, I would like to highlight the standard learning analytics. And all institutions agreed on the pot potentiality and value of having information management system in place for the improvement of learning processes. But on the other hand, we observe a lack or a need to enhance and information management system for the systematic collection of data related to the quality assurance of the assessment. So those are the main conclusions from uh, the application of those standards and uh, having the third pilot finished. So which are the main conclusions we can say from the test lab project and quality assurance perspective that an e-assessment system like Tesla can contribute to provide confidence to fully online and blended provision and it can improve the perception and development of e-assessment processes and also it can contribute to reduce the number of diploma meals or with low reputation and in overall which are the conclusions I would like to, to share with you. The first idea is that higher education institutions are adopting new pedagogies very quickly, while quality students agencies lag behind in terms of giving special considerations to e-learning. ENQUAS working group demonstrate that ESG, the European Standards and Guidelines, are fully applicable to e-learning provision. And this work uh, provides a common understanding for higher education institutions and quality assurance agencies. Innovation projects as Tesla can contribute to provide more confidence to higher education system, to the society. And now maybe we are in the transition to, let's say, to education 4.0. And the question is that are the quality assurance are quality assurance agencies ready for the, this transition? And thank you very much for your attention. And now I think it's turn for, I, I'm not quite sure if it's turn for the questions or for the poll. Eva, if you can help me, please. Yes, um, first of all, um, Thank you so much, uh, Esther, for this very, very, um, uh, very good uh, presentation, both the considerations for e-learning and about the Tesla project. And I think you gave very, very good insights and um, a lot of uh, thoughts for thinking. Um, so uh, before we take um, our questions, I will give the floor to the audience if they have a uh, uh, any kind of questions, uh, either to Esther or maybe to me as well. So please uh, write in the chat. While, um, while people are thinking, I would like to start with um, 
one uh, reflection or question. I think you really pointed to a very, very important issue, and that is the need of, um, I mean, e-learning and pedagogical considerations and this kind of things going in, uh, or moving to onwards to e-learning, blended learning, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, it's often, um, in case it is um, handled at the institution, it's often uh, at the pedagogical centers and among the teachers. And they have to, you know, live their own kind of life. But you really pointed with um, both your presentations the need for uh, quality assurance agencies and quality assurance centers, even at um, institutions, to deal with those kind of questions. And um, I think that's really, really important um, and because, I mean, there are some kind of spin off effects as long as quality assurance agencies, I used to say myself, <laughs> as long as quality assurance agencies are not asking uh, universities for providing this kind of uh, information or this kind of task, uh, universities are not dealing with it. And as long as universities are not uh, dealing with it or asking faculties about it, faculties, faculties don't care. And that goes the whole way down to the teachers and to the students. So I think you, you really pointed to a very, very important issue. And I would like to maybe to what people are thinking, um, uh, if you can um, say something more about the, this or your thoughts during the project, uh, journey, so to say, how to really make this mainstream within an organization, because uh, there are so many centers or units involved in it, like the, what you said, the pedagogical centers, the teachers, uh, the qualification centers, uh, I mean, all, it is um, very much about um, interdisciplinary work nowadays for quality, and that was what I pointed to as well in our study about uh, quality models. It is, you need to have a holistic perspective. But can you maybe say something more about that and how to implement that? <laughs> for this really interesting question. And I have to say that I can only talk about quality assurance point of view. And from my experience when assessing the Open University in Catalonia, because you know that we've got a really good scenario in our country. So we can work with them really quickly. Sorry, there's a lot of noise. Okay, now it's better, thank you. So, yeah, you're right. Um, there are different elements and factors influencing on the pedagogical model. And I think it's the responsibility of the university, of the institution to organize in the best way. This is the autonomy, and they have to decide how they want to organize. So then they have to answer to some standards that we prepare for assessing them, even from program perspective or institutional uh, review. Uh, I would say this, I mean, the problem we've got from quality assurance is that our procedures in some context weren't so clear to be analyzed by the experts and to help institutions to improve. And I, this is my point of view. I think we are like drivers and we, we want to enhance the system, but I would leave the institution for their autonomy and decide which is the best way to organize themselves. Thank you, Esther. Um, some persons are writing. So maybe another question from my side in the meanwhile. <laughs> um, I think it was very, also very good that you stressed that, I mean, one point of view, there are special considerations for e-learning provision, but on the other hand, it is very well covered already in the European Standard and Guidelines. You maybe just have to do, add some extra um, considerations or ex extra reflections or extra benchmarks. So, so, um, so why is it so difficult to, to integrate quality consideration into mainstream, into quality standards and guidelines. Um, I mean, uh, not, not, not the standards and guidelines from Manka, but quality assurance standards. 
quite often. We have had all by now. We have had uh, e-learning, like you know, left left-handed uh, pipeline, but it needs to be integrated. And by uh, your considerations, by Ankia, as uh, it's built on the SDG, uh, it is what a simple in many ways. So why is it um, so difficult for institutions to do it? <laughs> Yeah, uh, you're right. I think that it depends on, on the context, once again. depends on the country, the agency, and uh, as a group, as a working group. Um, as I have already said, we, we haven't invented, reinvented the wheel. It was a, a work based on um, some reports, really good reports, that we've got on, on the field, the experience of the agencies, because there are some agencies that we've got some experience evaluating and assessing online uh, institutions and online programs. So maybe the difficulty was to focus on the core elements and the really important things and make them clear. This is, as a group, I would say this. Uh, if I have to say something on how to implement those considerations in the procedures, I can talk about my context, the Catalan and the Spanish one. And I have to say that we have already done some steps, steps forward. And for example, in Catalonia and the, in the Exante and the accreditation programs, we've got, we have specified the vast majority or the most important elements that are already included in, the, in those considerations. Okay, so we can, say, we can say that in Spain and in Catalonia, we've got already done this, we have already done this work. But it's not the same in other countries, I have to say. But as far as I know, and after presenting this report in the General Assembly, in ENQUAS General Assembly, I have some inputs that the agencies are going to work on this and they are going to prepare some terms of reference or they are going, going to fine tune their reviews in order to include the e-learning perspective. So I think that those are really good news. We have a question here from Monica. Uh, quality assurance in e-learning education is not a yoke. Quality is not abstract. It is uh, a reality. University uh, autonomy is not uh, is not a justification for not complying the quality assurance uh, at the minimum required level. So, what do you say about that? See the question in the chat? I'm trying to reread once again, sorry. Take your time. Yeah, you, you are right, I totally agree. I, I, it's, it's not a joke, it's a reality, and, and the autonomy is not a justification, of course. Um, I'm not quite sure if I was clear with my answer before. I was talking about more in how the university is organizing in order to design the pedagogical model. And if the question is more related on how the institution should comply with, with, the, with the standards, I totally agree, this is a responsibility of the institution and they have to fulfill and comply the requirements. Uh, it is important to bear in mind that all quality assurance agencies work within the framework of the European Standards and Guidelines and then each agency uh, prepare their review methodologies that it could be at institutional program level it could be a mixed of both there are a lot of types and those standards the quality assurance standard can be 
a little bit different from one top context to another one. But all of them, at the end, should, should fulfill the European standards and guidelines. This is the basis. And of course, the quality is the responsibility of the university and it should be covered by them. This is not an excuse to, be, to provide any e-learning or not. They should provide equally quality if we are talking about e-learning provision or traditional education. Question from uh, Therese Bird. I know the UK e-learning context to some extent, but I don't know about the rest of Europe. So may I ask, uh, are e-learning programs generally assessed by exams or by essays or other ways? Um, if we do exam, by e-learning, how do we make uh, sure the person submitting the exam is not cheating? Well, here I can explain... Well, the question is about uh, how to ensure that people are not cheating. Yeah, I assume that this is more related to Tesla project. Um, what is going to be really interest, interesting at the end of Tesla project is that there will be like a set of different um, e-assessment models that will be recommended to use with different tools. This means that one of the bases of the Tesla project was the flexibility. So this means flexibility for pedagogical models, flexibility for the e-assessment, including essays, including um, um, tests, including programming, including other things. So there will be a matrix with a relationship analyzing which is the method you are using and which is the recommended instrument. Okay, because the flexibility is also for the instrument. It is clear that there are some um, assessments. For example, if you have an oral exam, you are not going to, to choose the keyboard instrument. So there will be um, recommendations in this way. But of course, there's a, the academic freedom and the teacher should know about which is the best assessment method in order to assess the learning outcomes, etc., etc. I would like. I see that uh, Carlos is uh, writing something. Um, I will ask you in the meanwhile. Um, I as you know I'm working a lot um, about quality myself, and I'm also a quality reviewer. And I was recently at the um, UNESCO conference for quality assurance agencies. And um, one of the outcomes from that conference, it was held in uh, Geneva in uh, Europe. And um, the outcome was that quality assurance agencies, they, I mean the staff there, they are not ready for e-learning yet. Uh, so that is one of the main issues. I mean, we do a lot of work for teachers, academics, to um, but um, the people who are working on quality assurance agencies are not ready yet. So how to deal with that? Okay, I think that, I think that are, sorry, I think that we are on the way and we are doing some trainings. I think that depends once again on the context, sorry to repeat myself so much. For example, in Catalonia we've got a really good scenario because we've got an open university, so this means that we have learned a lot for assessing the, them. Uh, there are other contexts that maybe they don't have a distance or fully online universities and they don't have so many experience. But they have to be trained. There has been some actions, for example, in co-organize a seminar uh, where new staff 
hired by agencies were trained and this work was explained there and there was a workshop explaining and working with those considerations okay so i think that agencies we are taking care of 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 this um, and we are going to be ready some of agencies we are more ready than others of course but we are we will be there very soon i think that the first step it has been done with this document and then of course we have to do more actions sounds uh, really promising esther thank you so much for that <laughs> i see that uh, that carlos was uh, more or less uh, that uh, touching on the same kind of issue that uh, the need to be natural bodies uh, or uh, agencies dealing with this, not just to leave it to the educational providers. Um, yes, uh, I think maybe it's uh, time now to um, uh, ask the audience uh, of some of the questions you have prepared. So we have uh, two questions for you. Still, there are possibilities to, uh, to write in the in the poll also about uh, the SIG talent quality enhancement. It is still there. So, can you say something about your questions, uh, Esther? Yeah, if, if I may, I would like to, to not to influence too much on, on what I have already uh, explained before, but for us, it will be very useful to know which is your opinion. From your opinion, which are the most challenging standard? From the internal and external perspective. And this, your opinion is really important for us because we want to do further work and we want to focus on some of these standards. Okay, I, I don't know if we can begin to comment something. <laughs> or do we have to wait a little bit more? Well, I think it's clear that for from the external point of view, <clears throat> most of you think that design methodology is fit for purpose is one of the most challenging ones for quality assurance agencies. Okay, and for the internal perspective, it seems that we've got four standards that are mostly equally quoted. So we've got, oh no, not, Three, three of them, sorry. Student center learning, teaching and assessment, student admission, progression, recognition and certification, and teaching staff, isn't it? Okay. Yeah, I don't know if uh, we have some time 
if someone can share something in the chat, Eva, is it possible to? We have a uh, we have still time. We have um, signed this webinar, so there are time for discussion. Uh, so please, if you would like to, um, uh, maybe it's even possible to um, to get the mic if you would like to raise a question because we are not so so many uh, still here. Um, or maybe you can. I think you have done this um, kind of questions before, Esther. Uh, is it used? Is it more or less the same as uh, the answers you used to get, or? Some of them, yes. Uh, for example, from quality assurance perspective, the external uh, perspective. For us. We would say peer review experts to have a pool of experts uh, really trained and prepared for for the evaluation and for understanding the pedagogical model and everything is one of the key elements and this is something that worries a, a lot to us and this is more or less the feeling and the consensus we've got in the working group. For designing methodologies for people purpose, I think that we can do it. <laughs> Of course, we have to understand the model, but for us it's more challenging to have the experts or enough experts, because I have already said nowadays, we can say that they are not, uh, let's say, fully traditional universities. So an institution offering only face-to-face -face programs, there are very few right now. And I'm talking about my context, okay? So, for us, it's more complex to have these experts. And from the internal quality assurance point of view, yeah, we normally, we, are, we agree that student-centered learning, teaching, teaching and assessment is a really important and challenging standard not only for e-learning, but also for traditional education. Uh, recognition is also important, and teaching the staff. But I would also uh, highlight the student support, because this is something really important. And, well, we have realized that universities with a tradition of offering online or distance education, they are really well prepared to provide the proper student support. But universities that are new in the sector, is universities or institutions new in the sector offering online programs, or traditional universities which are offering uh, new online or blended programs, especially focusing online, sorry, uh, they've got some difficulties on having a proper student support. But yeah, uh, what it has already appeared here is our thoughts too. Uh, okay, uh, thank you so much. Um, I'm wondering, are there any uh, other questions from the audience? And I'm wondering, uh, are there any questions uh, from you, Esther, to us? Besides those you have, um, have raised uh, so far? For me, it's fine. I'm, I'm really happy with having these uh, results of, of those two questions. Uh, so thank you. Uh, we are well in time. Uh, we have uh, one uh, last question for you in the audience. Just waiting for that one. So from um, from Eden's uh, side, we are very uh, keen to know what um, what are your takeaways from today's uh, web webinar. We can get some feedback. 
and to do some follow-up as well. You? I will not uh, hold you for too long because I know that you are busy with other kind of duties as well uh, this uh, afternoon. Uh, so um, in case you have, have something to write, we are very happy for that. But in case you haven't, uh, that's fine also. Uh, anyway, um, I would like to thank you so much for uh, taking your time to being with us uh, this uh, afternoon, talking about uh, so important issues as uh, quality consideration in e-learning provision. It is a really, really hard topic, as uh, we have been discussing for one and a half hour by now, that the, the landscape is changing in education and there are other kind of demands and we need to uh, have some kind of other kind of a quality agenda to move forward. And we are very happy to do that together with all of you and all of us who are interested in this area in different kind of ways. Uh, together we can do a lot. Um, this uh, webinar is uh, recorded and uh, you will have the link um, afterwards and uh, it will also be uh, provided from Eden uh, for all the webinars uh, for the week. Uh, we are continuing with webinars uh, this afternoon already, so if you are like to continue, uh, you are most welcome to do so. Uh, then we also have a webinar for tomorrow. So please register if, if you have an interest. and. Um, we are really, really happy that you have joined us for Eden European Distance Learning Week. So uh, thank you so much. And um, yes, I see we have some answers. Very, very good. Quality assurance must be respected also in e-learning too. I'm happy to see the references to the paper. <coughs> Appreciate that quality assurance agencies are working on the way. Um, you will have the slides, of course. and. Um, my slides and also at Esther's, you have some um, some more links, and I'm sure it's uh, for you as well, Esther. You're welcome to use the slides and to use the information we have pro provided for you. So with that, I will um, let me see if uh, Antonia is saying thanks. It's a new perspective in this um, theme for me. Very good. Thank you for the comment. So with this. Um, Last words, I would thank you all so much uh, for uh, joining us. And I would like to thank you so much, Esther, for being with us uh, this afternoon and for sharing your uh, experiences and competences uh, in the field and uh, after you have um, uh, coordinated this uh, very, very important work. So I think we all have to bear it forward wherever we are working. Thank you very much. So uh, have a nice uh, afternoon and uh, a nice rest of the week. Thank you so much.